Hello and welcome, Hero Forged fans. As always, I am Dr. Faust of the Hill People, and today we are going to be painting up this rather typical looking Nordic barbarian ish guy. And we are going to be focusing on how to paint skin and also how to paint metal, that is, swords and armor and what have you. So we're just going to jump right into it. When it comes to painting skin, of course, you have a wide variety of possibilities, more than I can possibly cover in a single video. What I can do is show you one way to paint it, and then explain different things you can change in case you want to make it darker or lighter. For our Barbarian, we are starting off with three colors. We are using Vallejo Game Color Heavy Skin Tone, Charred Brown, and some Model Color Burnt Cadmium Red. Heavy skin tone is going to be our base color, charred brown is for shade to darken it, and the cadmium red is to add a little bit of red because we want to add a little bit of red to flesh tones. That first layer is not quite a shade layer, it's more a, just a, a deep base. I like to start with a dark color and work my way up. We are going to cover up 99% of it and leave it mostly just as a dark line wherever the flesh meets something else. I discussed that in the previous video, leaving a dark line between two different objects on a miniature so you get a nice contrast between the two. Our first real shade layer is once again a mix of three colors, this time heavy skin tone, charred brown, but we've omitted the dark cadmium red and replaced it with cavalry brown instead, which is a little bit lighter in color. While complicated, using three colors actually benefits you if you want to change the skin tone. Uh, if you want something darker, add more of the charred brown. If you want something more of a medium brown with a little bit of red in it, you can add more of the cavalry brown. So just using these three colors here, you can actually come up with a wide variety of different skin tones. For our next shade layer, we have removed the charred brown, and now we're just working with a mix of heavy skin tone and cavalry brown. And as I said, this is a shade layer as usual, so we're applying it with the layering method. Very thin coats, repeatedly applied, getting into all the areas where we still want to have shade, but not covering up the areas where we want the deepest shade. So you gotta think about those armpit areas underneath the arm, anywhere that we need a little bit more shadow. After a few thin layers of that previous mix, we finally reached our base coat step, which is straight heavy skin tone. Now, if you've been paying attention, you notice that none of the colors that I've used so far have skin or flesh written on the label. This has been the first one. Every paint manufacturer has various bottles marked flesh for painting different types of skin tones, but I find them rather limiting and a lot of them are not very realistic. And you're not going to find a, a bottle marked flesh for every type of possible skin tone that you can ever imagine. So it's good to experiment and use bottles that are not marked flesh. I think in previous videos we've used a brown sand, we've used beige red, and uh, that's a real benefit trying different colors out for different needs. Just because it says wood on it doesn't mean it has to be used for painting wood. Doesn't Just because it doesn't say flesh doesn't mean you can't use it on flesh. So experiment, try new colors, try new things. Also going back to our three color recipe for our skin here, if you wanted a darker skin tone, you can use this layer as a highlight layer rather than a base coat. Leave some of that darker skin showing through, use this as just a, as a sparing highlight, and then you would end up with a, a darker skin tone. Our first highlight is basic skin tone mixed with our heavy skin tone. And as always, as I said before, we are layering. So very thin layers. We're just starting out right here now. You may notice that the paint isn't going on as smooth as you would like it, but once you put another layer on top and another layer on top, 
uh, it's going to start smoothing out. Uh, if you do it with the paint thin enough, you're not going to see the brush strokes after you get a few coats on, and it's all going to blend together and look really, really nice. For the rest of our highlights, we're going to keep it simple and just add more of the basic skin tone as needed. And you can see here we're working on smaller and smaller areas, trying to pick out those muscles, give them nice good definition. Don't forget about the face. Also, you always want to keep a good eye on all the other parts of your miniatures. Sometimes you'll lose uh, a part of an arm or a uh, exposed elbow or a knee that kind of gets lost in the shuffle of all those clothes. So make sure to keep uh, an eye on all parts of your miniature, make sure you're highlighting everything as needed. The final highlight is the same mixture, just with a lot more of the basic skin tone added. And you can see we're just highlighting very small spots here, because uh, it is the final highlight. We want the contrast between the light and the dark. Um, at this point, if I was painting, uh, let's say, a pale, more pale skin tone, then we could put more emphasis on the basic skin tone. We could have worked more of that into each of our highlight steps. And then at this point, we could have added white to it to do another highlight or two. So it's just a matter of, if you want to follow the same recipe, you can. Uh, just adding or removing or replacing a color here and there and you can get a wide variety of skin tones or of course experiment on your own which is always great. The skin is basically done at this point but if you want to go an extra step you can add a little bit of color here and there to the recesses and or the highlights. Adding a little bit of extra color on the miniature really punches things up makes it look just a little bit more interesting. In the case of our Barbarian here, I'm starting off with some Carmine Red. And you can see on the palette how thin it is. We just made a glaze of it, extremely thin. And I'm just applying some of it in the recesses, uh, and a little bit on the cheeks to give a little bit of warmth on the cheeks. It just adds a little bit more color to the shade areas. We do not want to overdo this, definitely. Two glazes, uh, letting one dry and then applying another one is the maximum you want to do here, but uh, it does make it a little bit more interesting. Uh, gets away from that mannequin look of just the same uh, type of uh, skin across the entire miniature. And then taking that even a step further, now doing almost the same thing with Red Violet putting this in the deeper recesses of the model. Once again, just adding a little bit more color. When it comes to adding glazes like this, there's a wide variety of colors you can do. Uh, some look realistic, some are more artistic interpretation. If you could think of the difference between, say, a Michelangelo painting versus a, a Brahm painting, uh, vastly different skin tones, but they both look great. Uh, I'm using sort of a purple red color here. You can go with more purple color. Uh, you can go with blues in the recesses. Some people actually even prefer to have a green undertone to their miniatures. Experiments, uh, find out what works best for what you're painting. Uh, like I said, we're gonna stick with the reds, just add a little bit of purple for this miniature. And I think it really adds a little bit of spark to the model. The last thing to do is to add the dark line. And for that, we're using some Vallejo model color camo black brown. We kind of did this at the first step, but this is kind of a cleanup step. You can either do it at the first stage or at this stage. I think this stage actually would work better for most people. But uh, this is basically just cleaning up any little errors. It's also really emphasizing the change between the skin and any other part of the model. So we're just running it around the edge, uh, around all the bands, the straps, around the arms, around the uh, waist, and also between all the fingers. On to the pants. Decided to go for a rather natural barbarian, so we're going with leather or buckskin pants. We did a base coat with some game color leather brown, and now I'm applying a wash of GW Agrax Earthshade. And we're doing two coats of this. Uh, we're letting the first one dry completely, and then we are applying a second coat.
The reason to apply two coats is because it's going to significantly darken the leather brown that we already put on. So it's actually going to instantly give us an extra shade layer. Uh, now we are reapplying the leather brown, exact same color, but it looks like we have three different shades here because we have the earth shade in the deep recesses, we have the earth shade on the leather brown, and then we have the lighter color leather brown that we are applying now. So we got three different shades using just two different colors. And for the highlights, we simply mix in a little bit of Game Color Plague Brown. We already have quite a lot of brown on this figure, so when it comes to the wood, we're going to paint that a different color. I've already base coated with Cadmium Red and gave it a black ink wash, and now I'm using Cavalry Brown for the highlights. And you can see I'm trying to paint the uh, streaks that you would normally see in a wood grain. So we have our paint a little bit thicker here. This isn't layering, this is texturing. So the paint is thicker so we have more control over it. So we can get those wood grain lines that we would normally see on a piece of wood. And then an additional highlight, this time using a Beastie Brown. And really going to emphasize all that wood grain texture so it comes out really nice and really pops. It's not very realistic, but it does look kind of cool and it adds a little bit more interest to the miniature and really draws the eye to that red color in the shield. Onto the sword and shield, all the metal bits. In the first video, we did a very basic paint job on the metal. It's just dry brushing and washing. We're going to go a little bit more advanced on this one. I've already base coated with some Vallejo Model Air Gun Gray, and now I'm adding some very, very thin glazes of Game Color Sepia ink. What we're trying to do here is kind of a modified, my own modified version of the Sky Earth metal look. Normally that's done with non-metallic paints and it's done up to a real chrome effect, which I really don't like. I don't think that's very realistic. This is a modified version, a more soft version of that look, which still honestly is not very realistic, but it looks kind of neat. The theory behind it is any reflective surface that points towards the ground, you add a little bit of brown shade to it or the sepia wash here uh, to make it look like it's reflecting the dirt. And then on the opposite sides, we use a couple thin glazes of blue ink, the idea that that's reflecting the color of the sky. We don't do it exactly 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. It's more the blue goes at 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock, and the sepia or brown goes at 4 and 8 o'clock. It's not going to work on every single surface on the miniature, so just yeah, use your own artistic interpretation. So two thin coats of the blue ink. You definitely don't want to overdo it. Uh, but we can finally move to the actual shade area. And for that, we're using black ink. Uh, same thing, very, very thin. About two or three coats as needed. Just adding some dark shadow where we need it. So that would be at the direct bottom of the shield. A little bit of the bits on the sword because we still want to add a little bit of contrast there, especially on the bottom edge. And then we finish up with our highlight step, which actually this is the first highlight we are applying and we are using Vallejo Model Air Steel for that. This is going at a 12 o'clock position, so straight down on the helmets. Uh, we're also applying it to the sword edge, uh, the edge, very edge of the shield, and also picking out any rivets on the model. Depending on how your glazes went, you may need to go back and reapply the 
gunmetal in a few areas, just a little bit of cleanup work. Sometimes those glazes, you realize you went a, a little bit too over anxious with them. Uh, you need some of that base color to, to still show through. So uh, you may just need to go up and just tone down those glazes and just reapply the gunmetal as needed before getting to this step. The last thing we're going to go over is the hair and I undercoated that with a mix of flat earth mixed with some desert yellow and now I am adding just straight desert yellow once again using the texture method to get a nice hair effect so the paint is a little bit thicker but using a very small brush to get the strands of hair to stand out. And then for the final highlight, I mixed in a little bit of buff just to highlight the bottom ends of the hair and, of course, the beard and the mustache. And our barbarian is ready to rage. So we went over flesh tones. I gave you just one recipe here, but hopefully gave you a little bit of ideas how to modify it if you would like. You can add more brown, you could add more red, you can tone down the highlights a little bit and get something completely different. Also, don't be afraid of experimenting with different colors. I have literally two rows on my paint rack of colors just dedicated to painting skin, and I think only about five of those bottles say skin or flesh on them. So try different colors. If you think something would work, go ahead and uh, give it a shot and you'll probably come up with something pretty decent. Also, I think the metals came out pretty well, a little bit better than what we first did in our first basics video with just the dry brush and a wash. So you can see as you work on your layering skills, you can do a heck of a lot more things because layering is the same as applying the glazes. It's the same technique, very thin layers, very evenly applied. And in the end, we have a fairly decently painted Barbarian with a very limited palette. We mainly just use browns and some reds and a little bit of yellowish browns. So we didn't use a whole lot of bright, interesting colors, contrasting colors on this miniature, as opposed to what we're gonna try next. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.